Hello and welcome to the section of Calculus 1 Extra Practice with Integration. In this section we're going to continue working with the fundamental theorem of calculus. We explained what it was in the last section. Here we're going to understand how to use it to actually get somewhere and calculate some quick answers. So let's take for instance a problem that we've written something very similar to before. The integral or the definite integral from 2 to 5, that's the lower limit of integration, that's the upper limit of integration. The function we're integrating is just a constant number, that's 4, and we're integrating over dx. All right, so what would be the antiderivative of this guy? What would be the antiderivative of this? The antiderivative of 4 would be 4x. How do we know that? Because if we take the derivative of this guy, we're going to get back what we started with. All right, so we've actually done the integration. We've found the, the function that we call the antiderivative. Whenever you do that, you still need to evaluate at the limits of integration like we talked about before. So what you do is you draw a vertical line, not a squiggly line, a vertical line, and you put the 2 and the 5 over here. What this means is that I've done the integration, I've found the antiderivative, but I still need to evaluate the answer at the limits of integration that we talked about. So from the fundamental theorem of calculus, you evaluate the antiderivative at the top limit of integration first. So that's 4 times 5. It goes wherever x is. And you subtract off evaluating it at the bottom, 4 times 2. All right, so make sure you understand that. And so what you'll get is, switch colors here, 4 times 5 is 20, minus 8. And so what you'll get is 12. And this is the answer. So if we've done everything correctly, then what we basically represented is if we graph this function and we look between x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 5, and we calculate the area underneath this function between these limits of integration, we should get an answer of 12. So let's go ahead and just take a look real quick and see if we get anything like that. So let's look here at our graph. This is x. This is f of x. Right? The function we're graphing is 4, and it's a constant function. Right? And I only care about, you know, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I only care about between x is equal to 2 and 5. So here and here. So really I care about this area right here. So what is the area of that region? Well, that's a, you know, that's a rectangular region, right? So how do you find the area of it? Well, it's going to be length times width. So what is the length? between 2 and 5 is going to be 3, times the height, which is 4, is 12, which is exactly what we get. So what I'm trying to show you is that even if we graph the function and we look between the limits of integration and we physically calculate the surface area that's there, we get a number that's 12, right? If we do it another way, finding the antiderivative and evaluating at the limits of integration by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the answer we get is also 12. So they're doing the same thing, is what I'm really trying to show you. Now again, we're picking really simple functions that we can find the antiderivative of in our head, but you know, uh, that you got to start somewhere. So we'll get to more complicated functions in a minute. So let me show you one more real quick. Let's do the integral from 0 to 2 of the function x over dx. All right, so we want to do the integration and evaluate from 0 to 2. What would be the antiderivative of x? And we actually had this on the board a few minutes ago in the last section. The integral of that is 1 half x squared. Now, how do you know this is the answer? Because if I take this and I take its derivative, I'm going to get this back. 1 half times 2x, that's what would happen if I took the derivative, 